Joaquin Phoenix is one of the greatest actors in the history of, well, let's be honest, ever. Throughout his acclaimed career, he's taken a variety of roles and he's knocked them all out of the park. And that's a reference to his role in M. Night Shyamalan's Signs for all you fans out there. Yeah, you're welcome. For each role he takes, Phoenix imbues his characters with remarkable humanity and an undercurrent of tragedy. When you start to dive into Phoenix's background, it's not difficult to understand where a lot of the pain comes from. Let's take a look at Phoenix's childhood and upbringing to discover how he's used his personal experiences to inform his performances. We'll also examine his previous roles to get even more pumped up for his take on the Joker in Todd Phillips' new film. I'll never tell. Torture me, kill me, I'll still never tell. Joaquin Phoenix was born October 28th, 1974 to parents John Lee and Arlen Bottom. He had four, yeah, count them, four brothers and sisters, including his oldest and only brother River, older sister Rain, and his younger sisters Liberty and Summer. Now you might be asking yourself why your name isn't nearly as awesome as the Phoenix family's names. Well, were your parents hitchhiking hippies and members of a crazy religious cult? <laughs> yeah, we didn't think so, or at least we hope they weren't. Seriously, it doesn't sound fun. We, we, we should offer a bit of clarity here. Phoenix's parents, John and Arlen, were married in 1969. The year before, Arlen was married to an IT professional and had settled into a life as a secretary. But once the flower power of the 1960s started to fire up, Arlen got fed up with her lifestyle. She decided to hitchhike to California, and it was during this period that she met John. Not long after their marriage, John and Arlen joined up with the religious cult known as the Children of God. It seemed to mesh with their hippie lifestyle and offered them the opportunity to do what they thought was profound and meaningful spiritual work. In an interview with Playboy magazine, Phoenix offered clarification about his parents' motivation for joining up with the cult. He said, My parents had a religious experience and felt strongly about it. And then he went on to explain, I think my parents thought that they'd found a community that shared their ideals. Cults rarely advertise themselves as such. And that's fair enough. John and Arlen traveled through Puerto Rico, preaching the ways of the children of God and living on little to no money. In fact, the family would beg for change on the streets of San Juan while they attempted to recruit new members to the cult. It was in to this world that Joaquin and his siblings River, Rain, and Liberty were born. Because money was so sparse in their family, River and Rain were forced to become street performers to bring in whatever extra change they could. If they failed to bring in money, they'd end up going to bed hungry. Aside from the lack of pay, the Children of God subjected its members to practices that were controversial to say the least. Now honestly, controversial doesn't even begin to cover it. Their belief system was illegal and filled with heinous acts. Sure. In interviews, Phoenix is quick to note that he didn't think his parents intentionally or knowingly put him and his siblings in harm's way. He said, I think the moment my parents realized there was something more to it, they got out. However, their escape wasn't easy. The family ended up having to stow away on a freighter to the United States. Once they arrived, they began their new lives, changing their name from Bottom to Phoenix to symbolize the family's rising from the ashes of their old life. Phoenix even changed his name for a brief period from Joaquin to Leaf. His intention was to mimic the nature-inspired names of his other siblings, but at age 15, he decided to switch back to Joaquin. But the Phoenix's new life wasn't without its fair share of difficulties. The family continued to struggle to make ends meet. During their first years living in Los Angeles, they were virtually homeless. Young Joaquin's childhood was spent living out of a car with his siblings. Phoenix told Detail Magazine, Even when we had no money, we still had a car to sleep in, and a friend's driveway we could park in, and a dad who said, I'm going to take care of you. Eventually, the family found a small apartment. Though the complex refused to allow children to live on the premise, the apartment manager was far kinder to the Phoenixes. It was during this time that Phoenix's mother started a new job at NBC. While she was there, she managed to get an agent for her kids. The mid-1980s saw Fortune smile on the Phoenix family for the first time in far too long. It was River, the eldest sibling, who had the biggest breakthrough. His performance in Rob Reiner's classic 1986 film Stand By Me announced the young man as a major talent. He followed this up with an outstanding performance in the film Running on Empty two years later. His performance in Gus Van Sant's My Own Private Idaho in 1991 one opposite a young Keanu Reeves continued to earn River enthusiastic praise. While Joaquin's career didn't catch as much attention as his older brothers, he did manage to earn steady work, logging a decent amount of film and TV credits. 
This included the likes of 1986's Space Camp. Yeah, that's right. The movie starring Steven Spielberg's future wife, Kate Capshaw, about a bunch of kids who accidentally get sent to outer space. There's little Joaquin right there in his Space Camp suit. Aw, oh, look how adorable he is. He also appeared in the 1989 Ron Howard film, Parenthood. That performance earned Phoenix a Young Artist Award nomination for Best Leading Young Actor in a Feature Film. You'd think it would have been his performance in Space Camp that would have done the trick. Right, <laughs> The young Phoenix decided to take a break from his acting career, opting instead to travel with his father. It was during this time that another terrible tragedy struck his family. Just a few days after Phoenix's 19th birthday in 1993, his older brother River suffered a fatal drug overdose. It was Phoenix himself who made the 911 call in an attempt to save his brother's life. River was only 23 years old when he passed away. Two years later, Phoenix returned to the realm of acting with Gus Van Sant's 1995 film To Die For. In it, Phoenix starred opposite Nicole Kidman. The performance earned him near unanimous praise, and he was back on the world's radar as an acting force to keep an eye out for. But it was his performance in Ridley Scott's Gladiator in 2000 that would launch Phoenix's career to new heights. Are you not entertained? Gladiator grossed roughly 457 million worldwide and received near numerous unanimous praise for its incredible action and heartfelt drama. The film would go on to win the coveted Best Picture Oscar at the Academy Awards. Phoenix ended up with a number of nominations himself, including his first Academy Award nomination for Best Supporting Actor. His other nominations include the Golden Globe for Best Supporting Actor and the Screen Actors Guild Award for Outstanding Performance by a Male Actor in a Supporting Role. And whew, no biggie. I've got like five of those. Get on my level, Joaquin. Ooh, editor disclaimer, our hosts here at Screen Rant do not have any Oscars or nominations or anything remotely resembling them. We'd like to remind them to please keep their focus on Mr. Phoenix's remarkable career as opposed to exaggerated claims that no one could possibly believe. Phoenix's performances following Gladiator might not have reached the same box office heights, but they continued to earn the respect of film critics and fans. But then he had to go and decide to be all popular again by co-starring in M. Night Shyamalan's 2002 flick Signs. Once again, Phoenix found himself launched to the forefront of well-known beloved actors. The Shalaman Phoenix Love Fest would continue a couple of years later with Shalaman's next film, The Village. While it wasn't as well received as Signs, Phoenix still earned praise for his excellent work. And not content to finish out 2004 with only one film under his belt, Phoenix also starred in Terry George's Hotel Rwanda. Phoenix had developed a reputation for being a strong supporting player in some major motion pictures, but it was with 2006's Johnny Cash biopic Walk the Line that he got to strut his stuff as the leading man. The dude not only nailed Cash's mannerisms and personality, he actually sang all the songs in the film too. Yeah, I guess it just come out like that. And the performance earned him his second Academy Award nomination. But in channeling Cash's troubled life and addictions, Phoenix ended up facing down a number of his own struggles. There were many that suspected Phoenix was experiencing a, a form of therapy in portraying the talented musician. Cash's brother Jack also passed away at a young age, and a number of reporters harped on this element. They also assumed Phoenix was himself struggling with issues of drug addiction and alcoholism. Phoenix ended up checking into rehab once production of Walk the Line had concluded. He'd started turning to drinking for comfort, and when he noticed his reliance on it, he made the necessary move to amend it. Phoenix called his time attending Alcoholics Anonymous the best thing I ever did. While Phoenix's personal life may have been on the upswing, his career took an odd direction that threw many people for a loop. In 2008, he announced his retirement from acting, stating that he intended to pursue a rap career. <laughs> I'm, I'm excited to hear this stuff, though. This was seemingly confirmed by one of the most hilarious and awkward interviews in the history of television. During the entire interview, Phoenix behaved in a near incoherent manner, mumbling through the exchange with Letterman and making odd comments. The world was utterly baffled. Turns out this new identity was a performance piece for a mockumentary co-penned by his at-the-time brother-in-law Casey Affleck. Phoenix remained in character for the entirety of the shoot, giving interviews and interacting with folks with the same detached, baffling demeanor he displayed on Letterman. While the mockumentary might not have been successful, it further proved Phoenix's unwavering devotion to his craft. You might not like the film, but you gotta give the guy credit for his commitment to that project. Phoenix made his return, quote unquote, to the realm of acting in Paul Thomas Anderson's masterful and aptly titled film, The Master. Its subject matter dealt with the inner workings of a strange cult, 
Does that sound familiar at all? The incredible performance earned Phoenix his third Oscar nomination. Perhaps his most impressive turn came in Lynn Ramsey's superb film You Were Never Really Here, in which Phoenix portrays a lovable hitman. With each of these performances, Phoenix manages to evoke sympathy and affection for each of these characters. It's this remarkable ability that makes Phoenix the perfect choice to portray the Joker in Todd Phillips' new film simply entitled Joker. Phoenix's personal life has been wrought with turmoil and strife. Many of the roles he's taken on have sought to humanize those individuals that have been cast out by society and his portrayal as the Joker seems to follow suit. Will Phoenix end up with yet another nomination under his belt? Perhaps he might even walk home with the golden statue at this time around? Well, only time will tell. Can you introduce me as Joker? Instead of letting the tragedies that he's come up against defeat him, he's faced them head on, acknowledged his shortcomings, and strived not only to grow as an actor, but to grow as a person. We'd say he's doing a pretty solid job, wouldn't you? Now, we want to hear from you. Were you aware of Joaquin Phoenix's personal struggles? Do you think he's the perfect actor to take on the role of the Joker? Let us know in the comments below, and if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to our channel.